<laughs> okay, this is a re we have a really interesting comic coming up, an interesting scenario. Because generally, we, you know, we book you know comics based on how funny they are, right? But this is a little different because my man Kenny DeForest, who helps run this show, Kenny's back, sitting, he's back there, the big. Big country looking white dude, he's from Missouri. <laughs> he uh, in the fucking like jean jacket with two pounds, it's fucking weird. But uh, he he doesn't, he challenged this dude. This dude coming up next was like, man, I can come on the show and I can fucking do it. They had a little argument about it, and then Kenny was like, come out here and fucking prove it, okay? So this is gonna be very interesting. I, I, you know, I don't know what to expect, but I think it's gonna be pretty funny. So please put your hands together. You gotta support this dude, cause fuck Katie's hate. Give it up for my man Darwin Doomers, everybody. Somber note, theft of lawnmower, big issue in this country of America. <laughs> no big deal, not gonna make a fuss. Johnson's not sure what to expect. Uh, the shirt says it all. Pretty much the best. Not gonna lie, it's the truth, true story. And speaking of true stories, I had a gem for you today. I was walking down the street. You guys ever do this thing, this walking down a street? Either to get to a destination or to work out? You ever do this thing, this, this walking down a street? No? Okay, that's weird. <laughs> Trying to get the crowd on something obvious. Wasn't gonna go too specific, but clearly I've alienated the non-walkers. <laughs> How's your soup? I was walking down the street, and I saw this man in tattered rags. I think you call him homeless? You guys call him the homeless in Chicago, right? You ever heard of this homeless person? Man or woman without a home, thus homeless? Right? Saw this. Saw this man, and he had a sign that said, Will work for food. Right? Have you ever seen this thing that's Will work for food <laughs> sign? Saw this sign, and it's interesting because I, I went up to him, I had to, uh, I had to approach this homeless fella. I said, Sir, sir, I said, because I'm polite. I said, Sir, wouldn't your sign be more effective if it said, Will work for money? <laughs> I figure with you have money, I'm no, I'm no job strategist. I don't work for careerbuilder.com. But I'm pretty sure if you work for money, you can buy the food that you're currently gonna work for and a home to shelter you from rain, right? <laughs> and the guy responded to me, he said, sir. Sir, he said, because he's also polite, he said, sir. You don't understand the half of it. It's my wife. She can't cook, right? <laughs> she can't cook, so he's out working for food because his wife can't cook. Slow pokes, get with it. <laughs> Highbrow comedy coming at you. Not homeless, I'm offended, right? Because this guy is out amongst the homeless population wearing tattered rags. And I said, sir, sir, I said, I'm offended <laughs> that you would be out here in such tattered rags pretending to be homeless just because your wife can't cook, right? He said to me, no, sir, sir, he said, he said, sir, can't stress enough, he said, sir, he said, sir, he said, it's not that, you don't know the half of it. <laughs> it's my wife, she can't sew either. <laughs> now I'm kind of starting to think, I'm a little confused, right, a little bit <laughs> baffled, why this man married her, she can't do any of the household chores. Am I right, fellows? <laughs> she can't cook and she can't sew. Kick her to the road, don't you know? Remember that slogan from your childhood? <laughs> so I, implied, I inquired further. I said, sir, if your wife does not cook and sew, why don't you just tell her to cook and sew? And he said, sir, you don't understand the half of it. 
which now I'm really confused because I knew the half of it, then I knew a ha another half of it, so by all mathematical accounts, I should now know the whole of it. But I don't. So I said, sir, what is the third half of it? <laughs> to which he replied with stone white, is that even a thing? Cold face, shocked eyes. He's really scared because he says, sir, it's my wife. I'm terrified of her. Wait, exactly, I was stunned into silence. You can't leave it just like that, right? Can't leave it like that, so I had to implore, had to inquire further. I said, sir, why are you terrified of your wife? To which he said, because I'm married to a ghost. <laughs> Thank you. And that really confused me, folks. He's married to a ghost, and I said, sir, sir, I said, I said, sir, you probably should have thought about that before you tied the knot, right? Mary a ghost, better think of that before you tied the knot. And he said, oh, I did. But I didn't think that when I hanged my wife and framed it as a suicide, that she'd come back from the dead, haunt me, and still wish to be married. <laughs> Darwin Dubers. Darwin Dubers. Post a chat, no big deal, not gonna make a fuss, no big deal, right? That's right, I got shirts. Probably wondering, probably wondering, when is he gonna plug his upcoming best selling book? The answer, three, two, one, right now. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you or someone you know wants to be a stand up comedian, that's true, the offspring of awesome, myself, Darwin Doomers, have published a book, Last Lies and Lemonade The Doomers Approach to Stand Up Comedy. It's gonna be on sale for after the show, next to the Speakeasy Tees. Buy the book. Hey, here's a little Doomers fact for you. I like to call fat kids little teapots. <laughs> On account of the fact that they're short and stout, right? <laughs> That's right, laugh it up, you liked it. Ain't anything to do with the walking, but you love the fat kid jokes. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Not really sure how I'm doing at the time, but I'm gonna keep going. Gonna rock this one out for you. Fellas and ladies, I was at the, a bar the other day. I don't know if you've seen this, this bar. This hangout where we get drunk, inebriated, if you want. I was hanging out at this bar, and a guy got this girl drunk, as guys often want to do with girls, right? So this girl, she starts in on the old blowjob routine. You ever heard about this thing, this old blowjob routine? Starts in on the old blowjob routine, and she's blowing the guy, blowing this fella, blowing this lad. He's, uh, he's looking down, he's getting ready, he's saying, hey, hey, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen, you know it's gonna happen. Just con He wants to confirm with the woman that she knows what's coming, right? Literally and metaphorically. So he's looking down and he tells her, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come, and immediately the girl starts chomping on his penis. Ooh, right? <laughs> starts chomping on his penis and he says, girl, girl, he said, he says, girl, why are you chomping on my penis? Girl looks up at, her con or at him and confused and says, well, I don't understand. My mom always told me to chew before I swallow. <laughs> That's what we call a zinger. Good lordy. Oh man. Uh, Jeannie mentioned Jewel Osco. Huh? You guys heard about this place? You ever shop at this Jewel Osco? <laughs> Trying to get everyone on board. <laughs> We're isolated at really weird times in this showcase. Ever heard about this Jewel Osco? Thank you. Everyone knows about Jewel Osco, right? Their slogan is Jewel Osco, where you can count on people who care, right? Oh, really, Jewel Osco? If you cared so much, you would never retard bag my groceries. <laughs> Because it's true. Ladies and gentlemen, I had a hot closer, but I have a hotter thing to do right now, and that's to bring my arch nemesis turned best friend, Kenny DeForest, up onto the stage. All right. Kenny. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that don't know, Mr. Kenny DeForest, Kenbo Slice, as some people like to call him, uh, we didn't have a little tiff, a little misunderstanding. But, uh, yeah, there's that. There you go. And I just wanted to say, I think. 
I think we can finally put it behind us. Yeah, man. I don't know if you can ask them. Did I or did I not prove myself for all of you tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Kenny, I am I'm sorry. I called you Kenny DeForest Gump because you're retarded, but yeah. you're not. Thank you. And I, listen, you did a really good job. You, you definitely proved Give it up for him one more time. I, I need your word. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I said that you shouldn't be named Darwin because your existence made me doubt evolution. I'm sorry that I said that. <laughs> I'm sorry I called you Kenny DeForest Whitaker because you look terrible and have a lazy eye. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, man, I'm sorry that I called you Darwindy Williams because your personality is as grating as a, as a black transvestite. I'm sorry, I didn't mean anything by that. I'm really... Yeah, and I'm terribly sorry I called you uh, Kenny Devoid of any talent. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm sorry that I called you uh, Darwin Du Bursala Andrews because you looked gay enough to fuck Sean Connery. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to. So I think, I think there's only one thing to do, and that's shake on it. Let's hug. Uh, you want a hug? Yeah, you really impressed me, man. I'm sorry. All right. You have a bright future. Guys, give it up for Darwin Du Bursala. Yeah! <laughs>